G'day everyone, welcome back to part two of the electrical system build. Uh, we left off with the solar panel array being built and um, now we're gonna go ahead and get this EG4-6500EX-48 all-in-one um, MPPT charger uh, inverter set up on the wall here, the platform where it's on. Uh, and I know I said I wouldn't have any batteries, but I went ahead and bought some anyway. I shouldn't be sitting on them. But uh, these are EVE LF280Ks. So they're lithium ion phosphate and 280 amp hours. Um, I might show you a little clip here now. I already pulled these out of the box, tested them, um, charged them up, top balance, and then um, did a capacity test. And the spoiler is they didn't really meet capacity. Um, these are from Dokam Power and they're just not that great. Anyway, we're gonna run with what we got and um, start getting this mounted up, get the batteries in place, BMS on that, get it wired up and hopefully get some lights before it gets too dark here tonight. So yeah, let's get stuck into it. So that took us about 30 minutes to get this wired up as it stands right now. So we've got these all connected in series, um, negative to positive. These go to a, on the positive side, we're going to a 200 amp breaker, uh, and that is then feeding into the positive side of the EG4. Uh, on the negative side, we're coming out and we're going to the BMS, and this is a JBD. Uh, 200 amp BMS and um, it's actually pretty good for the price. I've got no complaints. So uh, we should be able to fire this thing up now. And I, I will say I've already been in here, um, had this thing running once before and got all the settings um, kind of in sync with the BMS. Uh, we've now got output going on. So I should be able to switch on this breaker now. I know you're thinking, this isn't a code, absolutely not, but just a proof of concept. So now that's switched on, we should be live. And look at that, we have light. So could turn off all these um, little battery powered lights now and um, yeah, plug in some lights. And I think that'll do me for the night. Okay, so now we're outside, we've got to get this array wired up. Uh, the plan is going to be to connect these uh, as two parallel strands of seven panels each. The kind of complicated part is working out how to do it such that I don't end up with one positive end and one negative end, and now I have to dig two trenches to bring them in, or I have to wire them back across to the center or whatever. Just uses more cable, more cable is more loss. So what I'm gonna try and come up with is a way just to plug these in so that I end up with the positive and the negative ends of the two strands meeting somewhere in the middle here. And then I can just bring one piece of conduit down with both wires, bring that underground and into the corner of the shed. Uh, and that's gonna be the most efficient way to do it both in the least amount of loss through the cable, as well as um, using just the least amount of cable that I had to buy. So uh, we're gonna go ahead with the, the plug-in and the trench digging and um, yeah, hopefully it all works out. So we've got our trench dug from the corner of the shed to this center post here on our array. I'll give you a quick rundown of the configuration, seven panels on this side and a bank of seven panels on this side, which then combine more or less in the middle. Obviously there's some offset because it's an odd number of panels and they each feed in to a negative and a positive, which will then go up to this post, run down in some conduit and go into the shed. Now these cables are rated for direct burial and that's exactly what I'm gonna do with them. All right, system lives. Uh, we've got the fan running in here, which is a giveaway that something's happening, but um, it's not actually switched on. Uh, it's just charging the batteries right now, but they're pretty much fully charged. Uh, we were getting, uh, before it hit fully charged, about one kilowatt coming in, which is fine because it's an overcast day. Um, power comes in through here. It goes into a 1,000 volt, 30 amp DC breaker. Uh, and now the brand is Chotaxi. Uh, I 
wasn't exactly sure, it's not abundantly clear which direction um, it's supposed to go. And I took a 50-50 chance rather than look it up and I got it wrong. Uh, I arced it really badly when I turned it on. So I'm gonna replace that 20 bucks. I mean, I just don't trust it anymore. It's, it's definitely a increased chance of being a fire hazard. So that'll uh, get replaced next time I'm back. But apart from that, I mean, it still works now. Um, it feeds in, it's going to the batteries. I check with the app, we're getting good numbers on um, the charge rates and uh, the balancing and the, it's already hit the, uh, overcharge cutoff uh, for one cell. Uh, so everything's working uh, as far as the BMS goes and the charging inverter wise. Uh, if I switch this guy on, um, comes up with some nice lights, shows us we're putting out 120 volts. Uh, circuit breaker is on and we turn this guy on and it's 1500 watts and we get some hot air. So uh, everything's working. I'll turn that off because it doesn't need to be any hotter in here than it already is. But um, yeah, I'll probably pretty this system up a little bit, especially before we have to get it inspected for code, but that won't be until we are pretty much framed up with the house, which is still a ways off yet. Once we get the backhoe that I'm still waiting on, it's been like 10, 11 weeks now. Anyway, as soon as that comes, digging the footers for the house, we're getting the uh, water line put in, get the uh, culvert pipe put in, and uh, start trenching these power lines in so I don't have to do it by hand. But for now, um, we're pretty much as far along as we could be. So yeah, next step will be footers for the house. Um, and as soon as we get things um, approved and, and get some holes dug, uh, we can start on those. So catch you then, bye.